Hi, welcome to the 6502 show. Well, if you saw the thumbnail for this video, you know what we're going to talk about because the source code to Focal 65 has been found. And what we're going to do is we'll take a look at how I found it and some of the code itself and talk about some future things that we hope to get done. So stay tuned. Almost from the very beginning of 6502 use, there was 6502 user notes published by Eric Renke, first known as Kim1 user notes. It evolved, covered a few more systems as he went along, and of course, Eric went on to be involved with some other really cool and seminally important magazines. Well, back to 6502 user notes, Eric was a big fan of Focal, and he ran a section on Focal in some of the later editions of 6502 user notes under his language lab section. A lot of people were doing a lot of modifications to Focal to extend its usability, and there were instructions on how to do that in the original user's manual. Well, a lot of that documentation, as you know, if you've seen my previous videos on Focal, a lot of that documentation seemed to be lost to time. Uh, there wasn't even source code or anything. But in those days, People were doing all kinds of interesting things. They were messing around with the memory, you know, making some room at the top of the program to put new functions, new commands, new commands like uh, cassette save and load, bringing in strings of data off the cassette that could be operated on immediately. I mean, you could even send it pre-recorded commands, you know, right out of the right out of the tape deck. People were doing mods to add, um, you know, the equivalent of say a Commodore Sys command. It, you know, an ML jump routine, all kinds of other crazy things, even the ability to light up the Kim One's LED display. A lot of the existing information is incomplete. It's just simply single pages from a magazine or a newsletter that tells you that there might be some enhancements available and write to this person 44 years ago, or there'll be a, a section of code, but you don't know where it would fit in the memory. You don't know where to latch it in. I mean, Where's FPOPJ? Well, without the source code, you just can't know. Although, it's now 44 years later, as I said, and I still want to make some of these mods. I want to make some changes and enhancements, and I want my Focal to be the best it can be. But without more information, you know, without the commented source code, it'd be a fool's errand to try this, just blindly seeing where things worked. So, I knew I was going to need some help. Lots could happen. So if you have the source code, please contact me and let me know if I can have a copy. It would be much appreciated by most of the 6502 community. Okay, back to the show. The first response I got was from a fella named Nigel W. And he sent me this tantalizing image. This is the first page of Focal 65 version 3D. 13 October 1977 is the run date. It has a huge clue on it. It has the author's name, Wayne Wall and Friends. So Wayne and his buddies were the guys who put this together back in 1976. And I wondered, is Wayne still around? Could be. Well, it didn't take too much searching and came up with a reference for Wayne on the 6502 group, one of the oldest computer users groups in the world. Well, at least microcomputer users groups, that is. And a little more sleuthing brought me Wayne's email address. So I sent him a note and heard back from him in a few days. And that started off a conversation. Wayne was indeed the principal author of Focal and one of the founding members of the 6502 group in Denver. And he kindly gave me access to various softwares that the group has. And he put into my possession the source code for version 4, the Apple II version, which also had many options for a math coprocessor to do some really great math with. Yes, the source code. This is for Apple II. 
This is version 4, finished in the summer of 1990 by Wayne Wall and Friends at the Colorado School of Mines Computing Center in Golden, Colorado. Let's uh, look at this giant document briefly, and it is huge. Um, this is page 1, and it goes and goes. We've got all of our definitions. And one of the cool things about this is that all the labels... I mean, thoroughly commented. You know exactly what everything is. When I talked to Wayne uh, a number of weeks ago, he told me that uh, he may even have over-commented some things, that he just likes to write documentation. Um, there's a number of interesting things here, and quickly I wanted to show you this. Error codes all there, explain what each one is. That's great. I've never been able to get a full list of error codes. And, well, there they are. Um, defining the functions here. And there are extended functions for the Apple II, which uses a special... Um, this version of Focal uses a special math coprocessor that uh, allows you to get all of these functions, which are great. Transcendental. Well, anyway, the code is quite large. Uh, we're only on page 12, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. And here we are on page 133, and we finish. And here is our Label table, symbol table here. And uh, yeah, this is a lot of code. And sadly, none of this is machine readable. Uh, Wayne and Eric Smith from the 6502 group, which still meets oldest computer club in North America, to my knowledge. Anyway, they've been working on some optical character recognition software and algorithms that will read these documents. But Right now, they're essentially just pictures, just pictures of code, and that's it. If you would like to have this run on a machine, limber up your fingers, because you need to get typing. And he also set me up with a user's manual for that version. And we did a video conference, had a conversation. He gave me some wonderful clues and things to look for so I could find cognates in my V3D version of Focal 65 and the source code that he had. He did tell me that, as far as he knew, there wasn't any longer in existence a version of the V3D source code, but that because version 4 relied so heavily on version 3 for all of its base functions, it shouldn't take me too much trouble to draw the parallels. So I got to work. So I'm looking at code, and I'm comparing it this way and that way and entering in the comments and getting some understanding of how this thing really worked internally. Well, it wasn't but two days later after I started working on this that I got an email from a fellow who will only identify as Mr. B. Mr. B sent me the full version 3D source code as well as the original full user's manual as distributed by the program exchange, the 6502 program exchange out in Reno, Nevada. What a gold mine. I mean, I was having fun going through the version 4 code, and hey, might be neat to resurrect that for the Apple II. But having the actual code that matched my code identically, oh, an order of magnitude easier. So thanks, Mr. B. I've reformatted the user's guide and it's ready to go and can be downloaded from my website and a couple other places on the web. Details are in the description below. Now, as for the source code, it's not ready to be released yet. I am working with Wayne and we're putting version V3D back together so that people will be able to use it and make the modifications and understand how it all works. So that should be coming together in a month or two, I would think. And when it's ready, I'll make an announcement right here about where you can get it. So I want to thank you so much for watching the 6502 show. It's always my pleasure to bring it to you. If you liked this video, and I hope you did, please hit the like button or even subscribe to the channel. That'd be swell. So until we see each other again, take care.